First on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, he enters the ring wearing blue and white trunks and joining us all the way from Quito, Ecuador. He weighed in at the middleweight limit of 160 pounds and he brings a professional record into the ring of 18 wins, two losses, one draw with 11 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight he is attempting to be the first Ecuadorian to win a world title. Please welcome the number two ranked IBF middleweight contender, introducing Segundo Mendo And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks and hailing from the big fight town of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He weighed in at a ready 158 pounds and his record includes 26 wins, two losses, one draw with 19 wins coming by way of knockout. And tonight he is making his third attempt at a world crown. He is ranked the number one middleweight contender by the IBF. Please welcome the fighter known as the executioner, introducing Bernard Hopkins. Once again, he is a referee in charge now to give instructions, Rudy Battle. Okay, gentlemen, I've given you both your pre-fight instructions. I expect a clean break at all times. And when I tell you to break, I want you both to stop punching, step back, protect yourselves at all times. I don't want any hitting on the break, no punching after the bell. All right, let's have a nice, clean fight. Good luck to both of you. All right, let's touch gloves. Touch them up. All right. Well, that was a major league stare down. The third man of the ring, Rudy Battle, almost took an uppercut from both. Bernard Hopkins, very trim and fit, well-defined body, solid skilled fighter, has speed and power. Segundo Mercado, one of 12 children, originally from the tropical beach area of Esmeraldas, Ecuador, home to the descendants of African slaves. He's a hard hitter, an excellent puncher, and a very good buster. And here we go, round one, scheduled for 12 for the IBF middleweight championship that is currently vacant. This is the rematch from a very good fight that had so much ebb and flow back in Ecuador. I'll tell you, Steve, the way they touch gloves, you'd think they don't like each other. You get that feeling. Well, the last time, you remember Hopkins came out just blazing and took that first round so clearly that uh, Ricardo said if you'd have kept that up you'd have knocked me out and he didn't in the second round of course that was a wonderful fight no, this has no. all the makings of a great fight also I've never heard a fighter admit that Ferdy <laughs> neither have I Bobby I think I'd faint if I heard you say well he could have knocked me out if he kept going for the next two rounds I don't remember a fighter ever saying that very candid uh, comments from uh, Mercado. Interestingly, in the end, it seemed like Hopkins, who was knocked down twice in the fight, seemed in better shape than Mercado, despite the altitude problem with thin air. In fact, Hopkins arrived in Ecuador just two days before the fight, allowing him almost no time to acclimate. Now, he made mention of the fact that in the second round he came out boxing a little more because he was worried about that altitude, but there were no effects in the 10th, 11th, and 12th rounds. Well, Mercado's not holding back in this first round. He's going right at it. Little instruction from Rudy Battle got a little mad said you guys are starting to fight dirty now. Let's keep it clean. Let's not have a dirty fight tonight. Hopkins in the black trunks landing a left hook there to the side of Mercado from the tough streets of Philadelphia is Bernard Hopkins had an adolescence mired by a series of wrongdoings. He has turned his life around now living a clean and uh, honest Life Mike uh, devotes much time working with kids in juvenile uh, detention centers, so it's nice to see a guy like Hopkins turn things around through boxing. Oh, well, yes, I've been very familiar with um, Mr. Hopkins for a few years, and he's always been a stand-up gentleman, and I, I commend him on all of his accomplishments. In fact, being a great fighter, he's also a great individual. Talking about Bernard Hopkins, who 
It's hard to believe looking to become the first middleweight champion from the boxing rich city of uh, Philadelphia. He's certainly not having his way like he did in Quito. He's, he's met a completely different Segundo here. Segundo is fighting back and taking some of this round with his sharp counter punches. Segundo's fighting a better defensive fight. He's covering himself up. He's watching blocking punches much better. He's effectively countering Hopkins right now. Hopkins said by not winning in Ecuador, it may have saved his life. The pressure on uh, Mercado was just enormous. The whole country depending on him. And here, as he put it, nobody really knows him, so he's a lot looser. Well, hit on the back of the head just then, and that's the kind of thing we've been trying to stop. We've seen so much of it in the last three or four fights we've had, and the referee popped right in there and said, that's on the back of the head. Don't do that again. Got to, got to stay on top of that. Final seconds of round one for the vacant IBF middleweight championship. English. I don't know how they're getting that through to Mercado because no one translated. He just said, both corners said, you're doing good just like you're doing. Keep that up. So both apparently satisfied with the performance, both apparently thinking that their fighter won the first round. Well, Mercado's trainer is Tommy Gallagher of New York. Mercado speaks a little English. Right hand there by uh, Hopkins at miss. Hopkins said he felt he had the better skills in Ecuador, but he was psyched out, overwhelmed by things like armed soldiers in his dressing room, kicking doors in, and the bathroom for security purposes. Unbelievable. Mike, er anything like that ever happened to you? No. I don't know. That is incredible. And if it was, it would, I would never allow it for a second. Well, he certainly felt that it affected him, although he did fight to the draw and did not lose. Let him go. I'll tell you what, Steve, that type of thing, I guess, could affect you when you see it. The fighters that Mike knows this, too, they have a mind frame. When they get in the ring, they can't see anything else, hear anything else, or let anything else in, or it's going to affect them. It's just part of the game. Hopkins got to do a little bit better than he did in that first round. He's got to take command here, and he just can't. This guy keeps battling back. Low punches, marginal low punches by Segundo Mercado. Segundo's moving more, too. He's a little more foot movement, trying to box a little bit. But this fight is nothing like the first one so far. So far, not at all. In the first fight, Hopkins came out very aggressively in the first round. And to the surprise of Mercado, he boxed in the second round. But a good pace to the first few rounds in this fight so far. Both just pouring it on. And as you know, the McCullough is a very elusive fight. He's very difficult to connect with a solid punch. And he makes the fight so exciting because he's so close and he's moving and he makes as if the other guy is trying, but it's almost effortless because he's not oh, landing no. solidly. Mercado 18, 2 and 1 with 11 knockouts, rated number right, 2, his right, second right, world right, title. Oh, oh, oh was that low? low. That looked like a blatant low blow, and yeah, Rudy and Battle didn't even see it. He didn't see it because he was between the two fighters, but wow, was that low. Step back, step back, up. Wild miss there by Hopkins. <laughs> so I think in the first fight, these guys may have gotten a little too much respect for one another. Yeah, they're fighting. seconds left, um, these guys, I believe, are too familiar with one another. It's, not, it's as if they're not as, putting out as much effort as in the first fight. Uh, it's almost as if they hurt each other enough in the first fight. They got too much respect for each other, Mike, and they're not brawling like they did in that first fight. But then again, the fight is early. Yeah, it just started. The last fight back December the 17th in Ecuador. A majority draw. 
An exchange of punches here in the last. Uh, all right, it's over. Here's what a picture perfect low blow looks like when the referee's not watching. Now watch, the referee gets between them, whoa, right there. Can't possibly be any harder and any better. The referee didn't see it, and it apparently didn't affect uh, the fighter Bernardo Hopkins, Bernard Hopkins. All right, this is round number three. You know, Mike, I think I inadvertently called you the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Of course, the world knows you're the former. But perhaps I was just a little premature. No, um, I feel that way. Once a champion, always a champion, right? Oh, look out. Big left hook by Hopkins. Legs. And he's, and he's got Mercado holding on. Look at he, how he's holding Mike. Looks like he's got him in a death grip there. Yeah, um, oh, this is amazing. That was, it came out of nowhere. Oh, that was one there by Mercado. But a good hammering shot by Hopkins right back. Hopkins is stepping in with his punches and timing Mercado now. He's a little not used to that movement that Mercado's given, which he didn't give him in the first light. He's starting to get the timing and the rhythm of it down. So a big left hand wobbly Mercado, 17 seconds into round three. I believe Hopkins should show, throw more punches to the body. He's throwing punches to this guy's head, and um, Mercado's extremely elusive. Mercado getting in some digging shots now to the midsection of Hopkins. You see Hopkins turning that right hand in. He's got bad intentions on this punch. The hook, too. He's turning his oh, punch. He's starting to big. warm up. Oh, great, great, great. Let him go. Get warm up here, Bobby. Uh-oh, uh-oh. He went down from up. Take your time. He just kneeled out. He'd been hit twice and uh, uh, low. But I guess it's nothing. Nothing. That was interesting. Hopkins went down to one eight. Now he bores in again. Left hook to the head of Mercado. And another bad left low blow by Mercado. But Mercado looks like he's hurt. Mercado's legs are not under Mike. He's in trouble. Not at all. He happens to be stepped right in with the right hand. Mercado is dazed as Hopkins continues to pour it on. Bearing in with shots to the midsection. Mercado comes back with a left hook to the midsection of Hopkins. Great and losing skills from Mercado. A very game Segundo Mercado hanging in there despite that assault by Hopkins. Another very low blow by Mercado. If he wasn't that elusive, he'd have gotten knocked out then, Mike, because he was in all kind of trouble. Well, he, as, you, as you know, most of the Latin American fighters are extremely elusive fighters, and they, they, the majority of them work on the defense. Well, he certainly has got A-plus on that because he knows how to slip and slide. His legs just don't look like they're under him, Steve. He's getting hit too clean, and he's taking something out of him. Mercado earlier surviving quite a barrage from... Uh, Bernard Hopkins here with 10 seconds to go in the third round. And the battle starting to surge toward Hopkins. Hopkins going with extremely hard body punches. Take that big right hand early that, that shook Mercado completely. You see he gets him in the corner, he leads with that right hand, he digs the hook in, puts his head right in his chest and rips punches around his guard. Hopkins means business. Ripping uppercuts on the inside. 
strong punch from all the angles, getting the job done. Well, he certainly 